let's try and understand the Black-Scholes equation. So Black-Scholes. So what's the equation? Partial of v with respect to t plus half sigma squared s squared second partial of v with respect to s plus r s partial with respect to s minus rv equals zero. All right, so now let's try and understand this term by term. So the first term is the change of the option price over time, and then it has three components. This one, this term here, and this term at the end. So what's the term at the end here? This is actually a reactive term. So what does that mean? So if you look here, the the change in option price over time is directly proportional to the value of the option price right now. So when you have changes that are directly proportional to the value, the solution is exponential. So we saw this with the time value of money. It's the same situation where the, the, the rate of change is proportional uh, with the interest rate. And so you get exponential growth or decay. All right, what about this middle term? This is actually the uh, convective term. So convection is um, flow, like a wind carrying particles in, in, in the air or heat being transferred by waves in, in liquid, something like that. So let's try and do an example to see how that looks. So I'm gonna draw V as a function of S. So here's S. So this is not a financial example, this is just a, a mathematical sort of example. So there's some sort of bump. So if partial of V with respect to T equaled partial of V with respect to S, so it's just directly proportional, what happens? So what is partial of V with respect to S? Well, here it's increasing, increasing, then it's zero, it's flat. Now it's decreasing, decreasing, and now it's back to flat. So it's zero, positive, zero, negative, back to zero. Now, if you add that over here, so here if we add on positive stuff on the left, then flat at the top, and then negative stuff on the right, and then back to zero, what happened? The bump is moving to the left. So we have movement. And you can imagine if you put a negative here, then it would, it would move to the right. So that's the convective part. It's you know, bumps moving along, flowing along. So what about this, this first term? So this term on the left here, this is actually a diffusive term. So diffusion, so how does that work? So the way I understand diffusion is with, is from physics. It's the one dimensional bar. So we've got a bar here. There's a little piece here with a width of delta x. And now there's a couple variables. There's q, which is measuring the heat, and f, which is measuring the temperature. And the, the simplest equation is that q equals f delta x. So temperature is instantaneous at a point, and the heat is a, you know, the area, like in integrating that temperature over a small area. So in this case, we're just a small little square here. And so it's just f times delta x. And we can immediately take a derivative here. So partial with respect to um, x, no, t. is partial of f with respect to t delta x. So just the derivative with respect to time. So that's our basic equation. Now how does heat actually flow? So what do we what do we know? So heat flows from hot to cold. In other words, from high temperature to low temperature. And there's actually a physics law that says 
it flows in a linear proportional way with some constant proportionality, the conductance. So what does that mean? That means that change in the temperature over time is directly proportional to, now here, the change in temperature. So we want it, we want it to go from high to low to have a positive flow. And so let's first look at the temperature on the left side. So this will be x and this is x plus delta x. So on the left side, what's happening to the temperature? We have partial of f with respect to x. And then if that's positive, so if this is going up, the temperature is increasing like that. That means there's low temperature here, high temperature here. That means that heat is gonna be flowing out. So we'll have a negative at x, comma t. And now on the right side, so here if it's going up, so if we have delta f with respect to x at x plus delta x comma t, if this is positive, that means our little unit here is the low temperature and outside is the high temperature. That means the heat is flowing in. So we're gonna get a plus here. So the change in heat is flowing out if that's positive. So it's going from our little thing left if the temperature is increasing, increasing going left to right. And then here it's flowing in if temperature is increasing left to right here. Okay, so this is partial of Q with respect to T, partial of Q with respect to T, we, these can be set equal. So let's do that, let's say partial of F with respect to T delta X equals K. I'm just gonna swap these around. Partial of F with respect to X, X plus delta X minus evaluated at X. Okay, now I just divide both sides by uh, delta X. And now I have a formula for partial of F with respect to T. It's this thing here. Now I wanna take the, take the limit as delta X goes to zero what happens? You end up with partial of F with respect to T equals K. And as delta X gets smaller and smaller, you know, what does this look like here? This is a function, you know, function evaluated at the right minus a function evaluated at the left over the difference. So if you remember back to calculus, this limit will actually be the derivative. the second derivative there because this is our function is the first derivative and then this taking the limit gives another derivative so we end up with the second derivative and so this equation here is the heat equation and so you see the you have a function the derivative with respect to temp to time is directly proportional to the second derivative with respect to space so if we look up here we have the derivative with respect to time is you know, some function proportional to the second derivative with respect to space. So that's diffusion. Pretty cool.